Artificial intelligence was a topic that kind of popped up a few times yesterday and obviously today. So what I want to do is talk to you about some very practical examples of artificial intelligence that you can immediately envision the applications to what you do. So in 2015, April of 2015, I started an internal initiative called Project Copy Scale. And it was designed to answer one seemingly straightforward question. Can we automate content creation through artificial intelligence? More specifically, can we use machines to write blog posts at scale? Now this may seem really abstract, but I had just come from South by Southwest, and I was at a session where the managing editor of the Associated Press and the CEO of an organization called Automated Insights talked about how the Associated Press went from publishing 300 earnings reports a quarter written by humans to 3,000 a quarter written 100% by machines. So to me, this was a life-changing moment as a marketer. And I thought, how in the world do they do that? So a month later, I'm back in the office, and I say, we have to figure out a way to apply this to what we do. Because we were, as an agency, we create content for clients. And I thought, if we can use machines to do this faster, more efficiently, higher quality, and have consistent quality, this could change the way we do marketing. The first application for us that was obvious was Google Analytics. So in many cases for our clients and for our own agency, we do monthly scorecards. The performance of the content we're creating, what is it doing, page views, which channels are they coming through, conversion rates. We would on average spend five to 10 hours per client per month doing Google Analytics reports. Our t people would be taught, we generally hire writers, people out of journalism school, and then we train them how to do SEO and analytics and social media. So we were taking people who weren't analysts and trying to teach them how to do it. And it honestly just doesn't work. So I thought we could teach everybody to do this and I found over time we could not. So we actually got automated insights and they had a natural language generation tool. So that's one of those terms we hear within AI. And they had a template for Google Analytics. And literally we plug in our Google Analytics account to their tool and could instantaneously generate a seven page report of everything that happened on our site over the last 30 days. So to me, this was magic. And this was my first introduction to natural language generation. And it did immediately start changing our organization because now instead of five to 10 hours, in many cases, it was 30 minutes of just reviewing what it said and adding a few insights and sending an email to the client with the report attached as a PDF literally upended the way we were spending probably over 100 to 200 hours a month of agency time. So we started exploring, moving further down that path. Later that year, Automated Insights released a self-service product where you could take any data set and import it into their system and then it would generate templates or narratives. Problem was, the first time I did it, it gave me a blank screen. I thought you just took a data set and put it into the system and it automatically gave you a narrative wasn't the case. Another inflection point for me of, okay, wait a second, this isn't gonna be as easy as it, I thought. As Pavan was saying, this, this stuff actually requires a lot of training. So as Joe mentioned, we, we created the Marketing AI Institute, and the reason I did that is I realized we were at a transformational period in marketing, and I was missing the understanding of what exactly was happening. What was actually possible now with AI, and where was it all going to go? So what we've learned from kind of mid-2015 to now has completely altered my view of where this is all going. So a very practical way to look at this is if you look at this slide and consider how many hours a month your team spends doing these things. Things like drafting social media updates, discovering keywords to optimize your site around, planning blog post topics, writing, optimizing, curating, personalizing, automating content, ads, landing pages, A-B testing, all of these very manual things that eat up a lot of the time that marketing teams have every month. And then consider if a machine could actually do the majority of those tasks. And a human's job, a marketer's job, was really just to enhance rather than create. 
That's what artificial intelligence is doing. It's accelerating us towards a much more intelligently automated future. So to understand what that actually means, Demis Hassabis is the founder of an organization called DeepMind. They were acquired by Google in 2014 for about $500 million. Um, Dennis, uh, Demis was a, a child chess prodigy. So just a brilliant mind. Um, today he runs Google DeepMind. So it's still the organization within, uh, within Google that's driving a lot of their intelligence. The key, as he said, is artificial intelligence is the science of making machines smart, which in turn augments human knowledge and capabilities. We hear these terms like machine learning and deep learning and image recognition and natural language processing. And honestly, for most marketers, you start glossing over. These terms mean nothing. This is a very simple, the simplest visual I've seen yet to understand what this all means. So artificial intelligence is basically the big umbrella. The main function of AI today, especially in marketing, is machine learning. That's the machine teaching itself, making itself smarter. Deep learning is actually trying to teach a machine to think like a human. What that means is a machine out of the box has no idea of the difference between a chair and a table or a cat and a dog. It's not even as smart as a preschooler. Machines have to be taught these things. They have to learn to think and act like a human. Deep learning is trying to do that in these neural layers. I see legs, I see a flat top, I see a color. And it's actually using layers to start understanding things. What powers all this are algorithms. Algorithms aren't new. Algorithms are a set of instructions. It's a human writing a code, telling a machine what to do. Except with AI, the machine actually starts writing its own algorithms. It starts evolving on its own, writing new rules, setting new paths. So this is a, an example of something that may be very familiar to you as a marketer. This is out of a marketing automation system. How many people in here use a marketing automation system like Marketo, Pardot, Eloqua, HubSpot? Most of us probably are in it every day. If you want to tell the automation system to do something, you go into it and you say, if this happens, then do that. You set rules based on behaviors, based on what list you want them to go to, based on an email you want to have go out. You set literally every rule within the automation system. So an example is, if someone downloads this ebook, then send them these three emails. You as the marketer figure out what those three emails are. You write the emails. You determine the alternative paths. If they click on something within the first email and they branch off into a whole separate path, it's really complex. If you have a single ebook and a single download, it can actually be done. But what if there's 10,000 downloads of that ebook from five different personas, from five different channels, and you need to adapt and personalize their experience in the email, on the website, within the chat pane, based on the actions they've taken. And as we learned earlier, trying to predict what they're going to do next based on that information. It's impossible for a human mind to do this. And yet, marketing automation is generally the tool most of us have to do that. And the irony of automation is it's actually manual. As we just saw, everything you're doing in there, you're actually telling it what to do. So marketing automation platforms, which are a huge piece of what we do and very important, they generally increase our efficiency. They make us more productive. They do drive performance but they don't provide insights into the data. They don't advise us what to do next. They don't make recommendations, and they don't create the content, or at least pieces of the content for us. But if we go back to DeepMind, there's an amazing YouTube video, a, a, a interview that Demis Hassabis did about how they trained Atari games, a machine to win at Atari games. So this is an example of Space Invaders. And what happened in this case Take a quick step back. IBM Watson, for me, was a moment that changed my view of everything in 2011 when it won at Jeopardy. As incredible as it, what IBM did, they taught Watson how to play within rules of engagement. It was for a specific game that had rules, and they taught it the rules. They gave it all the information it needed. And the technology is absolutely incredible, but again, it was taught within a confined space how to win at a specific game. In this case, DeepMind took dozens of Atari games from the 1980s, and all it told the algorithm was, get a better score. It didn't teach us any of the rules of how to play Space Invaders. 
The video on YouTube will show you the first time they turned it on, it got shot three straight times, dead. They let it run overnight on a MacBook. This isn't even heavy lifting stuff. By the time they came in the next morning, the machine was winning Space Invaders in ways that humans had never conceived of. It was taking predictive shots at the alien ships. That's machine learning. All they told it was get a higher score. So in 2011, when I first started conceiving of, well, what if we applied this to marketing, my world is get 100 leads. And instead of me as the marketer having to tell the machine, if this happens, then do that, spend the money here, hire this person, what if I just told it, get 100 leads? And it ran all the models of the ways we could get 100 leads, and then I looked at it as a human and said, that's really smart, I, I like this idea, I'm gonna try that next. And so instead of me trying to apply my limited knowledge and capabilities, I was relying on a machine that could assess many things. So what AI does is it takes a very specific task, like get more leads, drive more conversions, and it builds a system to do it. It takes data in and it solves a very specific task. As we talked about yesterday, there is artificial narrow intelligence, which is built for one specific thing, and then there's general intelligence, which today does not exist. General intelligence is what you see in movies. It's Ex Machina, it's Terminator, it's this super intelligent being. Some people think we'll be there in a decade, others think we'll never get there. The challenge we have as marketers and as humans, and this is an IBM stat, 90% of all the data in the world has been created in the last two years. Marketers, if you think about all the places data comes from, and we think we're pretty good at strategy. Some of us in the room have probably been doing it for 20, 30 years, and you get pretty good at it. The problem is 10, 15, 20 years ago, you had a few publications that mattered, a few broadcast outlets, a few websites. There was only so many places where data was coming from. Now you have social media, SEO, CRM, ad management, all of these places where information is pouring in, and we have a finite ability to figure out what to do with it all. So it's flooding us as marketers. And you may even have a, a business intelligence tool that tries to help you sort through it, and you may have a KPI dashboard that tries to narrow it down to five metrics that matter. But at the end of the day, there's just too much information and we cannot possibly solve it. Algorithms, though, they have an infinite ability. Only thing restricting algorithms is the computing power and the quality of the data. If you have computers that are strong enough and you have solid enough data, there is nothing the algorithm can't eventually solve. And yet, content marketing, marketing in general, is human powered with a little bit of not very intelligent automation built into it. But what I'm gonna show you next is that the future may not only be closer than you think, it's actually here now. And Dr. Hahn is gonna next up tell you a very specific example of how the Washington Post is applying it. So to understand what's possible in marketing, you have to understand what's already happened. So Pavan uh, talked about this stat yesterday, but in 1987, a guy named P Thomas Pefferty hacked NASDAQ, took the data out of NASDAQ and taught a machine how to make trades, started the computerization of Wall Street. Today, more than 60% of all trades on Wall Street happen without human intervention. I look at that and say, Wall Street's probably a little bit more complex than marketing. And if they, for 30 years, have been solving how to do that, it was only a matter of time until it came to us. One of my favorite examples is UPS. There are 55,000 routes daily of UPS drivers around the world. The average driver makes 120 stops a day. So, what is the possible number of alternate routes a driver can take to make 120 stops? The answer is a quinsextillion, which I did not know was a thing. <laughs> 198 zeros. That is the alternate paths a single driver can take every single day. So in 2003, UPS started building something called Orion, an intelligent algorithm that would determine how best to make deliveries for UPS drivers. By middle of 2017, every one of those 55,000 routes around the world is supposed to be primarily directed through AI. This is a quote from their senior director of process management. Can a human really think of the best way to deliver 120 stops? This is where the algorithm will come in. It will explore paths of doing things you would not because there are just too many combinations. Think about the exact same thing for marketers. 
is it really possible for us to figure out the way to personalize experiences for 10,000 downloads of an ebook? No. Netflix, which has been brought up a couple times, the manufacturing of House of Cards is another great example. They literally knew House of Cards was going to be a runaway success because they'd run the probabilities. So most of the content created on Netflix is actually done this way. 75% of what people watch is based on some algorithmic recommendation. Epigix, which I'm guessing that's how you pronounce this. It's a company that their website sucks. Like if you go there and you're like, wow, this sounds awesome, site's not gonna blow you away. What they do though is they're given movie scripts. They feed a movie script into the AI and the AI will actually recommend changes to plots, characters, actors, everything based on how much money they think it would make. So they ingest every film, every script, they look at and equate it to how much money each movie made, and they can then tell you ways to improve those movies. I think about the future of content that way. You write a piece of content, or as you're writing it, you submit it to the system, and it tells you, no, change this, move this here. There's tools that are actually developing now that can do that sort of thing. Shh.